Hello, my name is Brad and today we're going to go on a pilgrimage to Japan's spiritual origins on the Kumano Kodo. Japan has lots of different faces. In Tokyo you've got a very exciting, dynamic mega city. But there's actually places in Japan that are very different. We're here on the Kumano Kodo pilgrimage route where you've got the serenity, a very solemn side of the Japan countryside. Japan is an archipelago, it's an island nation. The Kumano area is in the south on the key peninsula of the main island Honshu. A thousand years ago, pilgrimage routes developed around sacred sites in the mountains. The natural environment was believed to be inhabited by deities. The nature was worshipped. Starting from the 6th century, when Buddhism was introduced to Japan, this area in the mountains, the rugged landscape, became a site of ascetic training for Buddhist monks. Over time, the nature worship, indigenous religion and Buddhism mixed together, mixed and merged, creating a syncretic belief system. The Kumano deities were believed to be a manifestation of a Buddha. There's three shrines that developed, the Kumano Hongu Taisha, Kumano Hayatama Taisha and the Kumano Nachi Taisha. And these are going to be the focus of our journey. Along the way, we'll be visiting the pilgrimage routes. We're going to be going through the small villages, looking at the sites, but also talking about the logistics of how to do it yourself. This is Tanabe. It's the main city in the south of the Key Peninsula. And it's the starting point for the Kumano Kodo pilgrimage route. The station behind me, it's called Kitanabe Station. The trains connect from Osaka and Kyoto. Most people arrive here by train at this station. Nearby the station, there's the information center where you can get maps and pamphlets and bus timetables. There's also a traveler support center where you can buy some souvenirs or last minute hiking goods, such as walking sticks or rain jacket. They also do luggage shuttle and luggage storage service. It's a really convenient travel support center. If you walk from the station about 10 minutes, you'll come to the beach, the coast, called Ogigahama Beach. If you're staying in Tanabe City, there's an entertainment district with lots of really good local restaurants. It's called Ajikoji. In front of the information center is the bus stop, number two. That's where pilgrims get on the bus to head out into the mountains. This is Takijiri Oji. So after the bus ride from uh, Kitanabe Station, the bus drops you off on the main highway and you cross the bridge and you end up in this small little shrine area. Nearby is an information center with toilets. There's a vending machine to buy some drinks, a small little souvenir shop and accommodation. It's here that uh, pilgrimage routes starts to climb up into the mountains. And it's a very popular place to begin a multi-day trek on the Kumano Kodo. So along the pilgrimage route, there's lots of small little shrines. Most of them have the oji after it. So this is Takijiri oji. So ojis are quite interesting. They're a subsidiary shrines of the main Kumano Sanzan shrines. And they're dotted along the trail. Every two or three kilometers, you come to an oji. This is one of the main ones, Takijiri oji. On the rocks, you've got poem monuments that the imperial pilgrims used to write. Here they did offerings of uh, sumo wrestling and poetry. This is one of the poems that one of the imperial pilgrims wrote. The trailhead starts from behind the building. And from here the trail goes up into the mountains. Lots of people ask if there's signage in English along the way. And the Kumano Kodo is very well signaged. Here's an example. All along the trail, they've got these signage infrastructure with the Japanese, the English, and the distances. It's very well signposted, so you can, it's very hard to get lost. <laughs> Let's go. So the Kumano Kodo is a collection of different types of trails. You've got stone staircases like this, 
You've also got the dirt trails with uh, roots on them. You've got uh, roads through the different villages. This is an example of the cobblestone section of the trail. There's other places that are uneven surfaced with roots and things like this. So they can be a little slippery, especially when wet. So it's important to have proper footwear when you're walking the trail. So this is Takahara Settlement. It's the first settlement along the Kumano Kodo after you leave Takijiri Oji. Kumano Kodo goes from village to village trekking and you can uh, really see the lifestyle of the countryside of the Japanese people. It's so quiet and isolated and relaxed and solemn. And you can really get a feel for the geography here at the lookout point. You've got the layers and layers and layers of mountains going off into the distance. You can almost imagine a thousand years ago the pilgrims walking through these isolated parts of the Japanese countryside. When people uh, walk the trail, the Kumano Kodo, often some of their best memories are being in these uh, settlements. When you get into these small settlements, you've got accommodations, a variety of accommodations. For example, like this minshiku or guest house. It's a Japanese style home with a couple of bedrooms. In each village along the way, you can find a place to stay. This is the village of Chikatsuyu, and Chikatsuyu is in the river valley. The river played an important part in the historic pilgrimages too. On their way, they would do lots of purification. And here it was quite interesting because they actually went into the river and they used the water to purify themselves, their bodies and souls. It's called misogi in Japanese. So this is an important place, important stop along the ancient pilgrimage route. And today it's also quite popular to stay overnight. There's also accommodations here and little shops and cafes. Okay, we're here now at Tsugizakura Oji. This is an amazing place. You've got these gigantic trees. You can really get a feel for the Japanese spiritual origins, the nature worship, the awe of the natural environment. It's really a wonderful place. We're here in Kumano Hongu Taisha. This is the first of the three grand shrines of Kumano. From Takijiri Oji to here, it's usually about a two-day walk on the Kumano Kodo. It's so beautiful. It's... Inside you can see the deities. That's where they're enshrined. At this kind of shrine, there's lots of festivals and events year-round. So depending on the time you come, you might see some special activities. Right now, they're getting prepared for the New Year's. Every year, almost all Japanese all across the country go to pray during the New Year's time. It's called Hatsumode. At the Kumano shrines, there's lots of symbolism. This is one of their main uh, symbols of the Kumano shrines. It's a crow, the Yata Garas, but if you notice its uh, feet, there's three legs. One, two, three. You can see this motif at, all over the region. Sometimes the depends on the place, but the general meaning is uh, ten, chi, jin. So heaven, earth, people. This crow was a divine guide for the first emperor to Japan. In Japanese mythology, he came through the region and got lost in the mountains and the deities sent this crow to guide him. So it's quite a powerful symbol. It's uh, your guide, your spiritual guide for the Kumano Kodo journey. The Yata Garas, or the three-legged crow, also is used in modern day Japan. If you're a football fan, you might have noticed the logo of the national team for Japan. There's a crow with three legs and one is on the soccer ball. That comes from this. So you can also see at the shrines 
where the national team has come to parade, you'll see lots of signed soccer balls and jerseys. So if you're a soccer or football fan, the Kumano shrines are a must-see. Historically, the Kumano Hongu Taisha was located on the riverbank near the Kumano River. It was moved to its current location about 130 years ago. There was a big flood and it destroyed the buildings. This is a massive tori gate and it marks the entrance to the sacred shrine grounds. It's really, really big. Wow, the closer I get, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You have to see it to believe it yourself. Kumano Hongu Taisha and Oyunahara are located in the Hongu village. Hongu village is the next main center after Chikatsu. Here they've got a few accommodations and some restaurants and souvenir shops. It's also the main bus access point for local buses. Behind me is the Kumano Hongu Heritage Center. There's two buildings, there's a south and a north. And here's a nice uh, information center with really great signage inside and explanations about the history and the culture. So if you come to Hongu, this is a really good place to come to get more information about uh, the history and culture of, of the Kumano Kodo. Another fun fact, in front of the Kumano Hongu Taisha is a stone signpost. For those of you that have been to Spain, you might recognize it. It's the Camino de Santiago, the way of St. James, their mark, their signpost. The Kumano Kodo pilgrimage routes and the way of St. James are the only two UNESCO World Heritage pilgrimage routes. This is the distance from here to the cathedral in Santiago. 10,755 kilometers. <laughs> it's quite a bit of a walk. <laughs> These two routes, the Way of St. James and the Kumano Kodo, are connected in lots of different ways. One of the interesting ways for pilgrims or for walkers is the dual pilgrim program. If you walk both the Kumano Kodo and the Way of St. James, you can register as a dual pilgrim. You get a certificate and a pin badge. To date, there's been over 3,000 people that have been registered from all over the world. There's a, a stamp book. Inside, there's some space here to collect the stamps. So on one side is the Kumano Kodo, and on the other side is the Way of St. James. It's really popular for people that are walking the pilgrimage route to collect the stamps, and if they've walked the Camino, they become a dual pilgrim. And you can register here if you are a dual pilgrim at the Kumano Hongu Center. Really, really interesting program. So to get access to these places in the mountains, you can take a local bus. The local bus infrastructure is really well developed for international visitors. Even if you don't speak Japanese, you can still ride the local bus. This is the bus stop at the Kumano Hongu Heritage Center. From here, you can take a bus to the local hot spring areas very short drive, and there you can stay overnight. Hello! Now we're in Yunomine Onsen. Now, onsen is Japanese for hot spring. You can see behind me here, there's the source, the hot spring source, right in the middle of the village. It's bubbling up, you can see the steam. This hot spring source, they've got the pipes and they bring it to all of the accommodations in the village. So each accommodation, there's old style yokan, traditional Japanese inns, and minshiku, like family run inns. They all have their own hot spring bath. They even use the water for cooking. For example, they'll make the, the rice, they'll cook the vegetables in the hot spring water. It's really, really good. You can even use the hot spring source to cook yourself. There's a public hot spring basin where you can put eggs in and potatoes and other vegetables. You can buy eggs at the shop nearby and cook your own eggs in hot spring. It's a really fun experience. This hot spring is very, very old. It goes back to ancient times when the pilgrims would use the hot spring water for purification rites. There's still the same place where they did this. It's called Tsuboyu. 
It's a small little hot spring uh, rock tub just up the creek here and you can go in and soak yourself. It's Japan's spiritual onsen. It's really nice. Nearby, there's also other hot springs. A uh, fun one is called Kawayu Onsen. Kawa is river and Yu is hot water. Right in the river bank, the hot water bubbles to the surface. So you can dig your own bath and soak in it. It's a, it's a natural wonder. It's amazing. From Kumano Hongu Taisha to Kumano Hayatama Taisha, historically, pilgrims went by boat. They went down and up the river. Present day, there's a, a boat tour. It doesn't go all the way from each shrine, next to the shrine, but halfway down the river, you can join a traditional boat tour. And that's a really interesting way to get a feel for what pilgrims past must have felt as they worked their way through the environment. All right, we're here at the Kumano Hayatama Taisha, and it's the second of the three Kumano Grand Shrines. It's a little different feeling than the Kumano Hongu Taisha, which is in the mountains. This is located near the coast on the Pacific Ocean in a more of an urban setting, right in the city of Shingu. There's the shrine here, but the original uh, object of worship is a rock, a big boulder on the side of the mountain overlooking the city. It's called uh, Gotobiki Iwa, and it's a really nice place. And you've got uh, steep stone staircase that you have to climb up. It's quite an adventure. Shingu city is a coastal city and there's a train line that runs through. The nearest train station to Kumano Hayatama Taisha is the Shingu station. From here you can take a train or a local bus to Nachi station or Kikatsura station. Katsura Onsen is a fishing port located on the coast. It's a unique mixture. You have the hotels with the the ryokan or places to stay with the hot spring baths. But you leave that, you go into town and you can see the fishermen. Katsura Onsen is very famous for tuna. They have wonderful world-class seafood, but their main product is the tuna. From Nachi Station and Kikatsura Station, you can grab a local bus for about 25 minutes to the Daimonzaka parking area. We're getting close to Kumano Nachi Taisha the third of the three Kumano Grand Shrines. There's two ways to get here. You can walk from Hongu over the mountains and that takes two days. Those sections are called the Kogumo Torigoe and the Ogumo Torigoe. And in the middle of that walk, that trek, is a little village called Koguchi. And in Koguchi, there's an old schoolhouse that's been transformed into an accommodation for trekkers. It's really nice to walk little, it's not for the beginners, it's a more advanced walk, but it's a very nice way to access to the shrine. Today, right now, we're going to access it the different way. We're in the base at the Daimonzaka parking lot. Just a lot up here is Daimonzaka, and it's a, a staircase lined with old growth trees. It's very photogenic, quite scenic. It's not that long, but if you're just looking for a short, compact, a highlight walk of the Kumano Kodo, it's highly recommended. Here in the parking lot, I found something else really interesting. It's the sacred crow again. Three legs with the soccer ball, the football on it. This is in memorial of the 2011 World Cup champions of the women's team, Japanese women's team. They've got all of their players' footprints and signatures all around the statue. Another connection with the Kumano Kodo culture and the local Japanese culture. Whew, that's a lot of stairs. <laughs> the shrine temple complex of Kumano Nachitaisha is the third shrine of the Kumano Sanzan, or the three grand shrines. It's located on the side of the mountain, so there's a lot of stairs to get up here, but once you're here, you're rewarded with a really nice environment. Surrounded by the mountain, looking across over to the waterfall, it's a wonderful setting. Here in Kumano Nachi Taisha, 
there you can really see the mixture between the Buddhism and the Shinto happening, the synchronism that we talked about earlier. Kumano Nachi Taisha is here, and right beside it is a temple, a Buddhist temple called Seigan Toji. And they're both together in the same place. So it's really interesting to see the relationship with nature and uh, religion here. This is on the, the grounds of Kumano Nachi Taisha. It's a gigantic old growth camphor tree. And it's believed to be like the womb of nature. So when you pass through it, you can get purified and grant your wish. So you get a stick, you write your name and date on the back, and then you pass through the tree. All right, see you on the other side. The air feels different up here. <laughs> it almost feels like I've been reborn. And then after you pass through, you put your wish, your amulet here, with the other ones. Everybody's wish, these will be burned during a ceremony to send all the smoke and all the wishes up to the heavens, up to the gods. So right next to the Kumano Nachi Taisha, is the Seigan Toji Temple, and it's a Buddhist temple. Let's go a little closer. The atmosphere of a Buddhist temple is very different than a Shinto shrine. The Shinto shrine's very austere, it's simple. The Buddhist temple is more ornate. There's lots more for the senses. So when you come around the corner of Seigan Toji, you get this view. The pagoda with the waterfall in the background, it's very dramatic. You can see the mixture of the religions here again. You've got the Buddhist pagoda in the foreground. In the background, you've got the waterfall, the object of the nature worship. And if you look really closely above the waterfall, there's a straw rope. That's called the Shiminawa. And that marks off the waterfall as sacred. From here, you can go down closer to the pagoda and then all the way down to the base of the waterfall. If you have a chance to visit the Nachi area, it's nice to have a good amount of time to see all the different angles of the waterfall and the pagoda. There's lots of stairs though, so bring your walking shoes. If you're traveling to Japan and thinking about walking the Kumano Kodo, going way into the mountains on a multi-day trek, might be a little intimidating for planning or logistics. But actually, there's some really good resources online uh, that you can get to help you plan. You don't need to be uh, bilingual in Japanese to uh, visit the Kumano Kodo. I'm just going to show you a few things that will help your planning. The first one is uh, the map. This is the map booklet. And it has lots of good detailed information inside with the uh, hiking areas. You've got uh, all of the elevation charts and the distances. It's a really excellent resource. If you're going out on the trail, this is a very important to have. The Kumano Godo, it's an official guide. This has information about all the sites, the background, of the history, of the culture. And it's a, also an excellent resource for people looking for, for more, deeper information. If you do a search for Kumano Kodo, you can find this website. This is the Tanabe City Kumano Tourism Bureau website. There's lots of information on here. On this site, you can find PDF downloads of maps, bus timetables, tips, preparation, model itineraries for walking. If you want to do a multi-day trek, it's loads of information on here. But if you go through the top icons, you can filter through the site. Once you have everything organized, you can go to the reservation site. This is a local community initiative to help the local businesses connect to international pilgrims. On here, you can find information about accommodations, but other services too. Luggage shuttle, guides, lunch boxes. It's got loads of products that you can book online. It's kind of like a shopping cart. You go through, you pick your accommodations and your services, put it into your shopping cart, and you make a request. Then the staff contacts the service provider and gets back to you. If you want to find out how to book more, just click on the How to Book page, and it'll detail all the information about how to make a reservation through the site. With these two web pages, you can plan your pilgrimage. So that's a visit, an overview of the Kumano Kodo, the pilgrimage to the Japan's spiritual origins. It's out of the way, 
It's an isolated part of Japan, but it's perfect for the intuitive, active traveler who really wants to visit and immerse themselves in Japanese culture. It's one of my favorite places on the planet. And for really someone who wants to feel the place, to get close to the place, this kind of active cultural uh, pilgrimage is the way to go. I hope we can all walk the Kumano Kuro together someday.